You look, well, foolish. You don't want to lose that sale, and you lose that sale. In other words, you say to yourself, don't hit it in the water, and you do. We get more of what we focus on. Focusing on what we don't want has a reach far greater than we realize. It seems to be our natural tendency, and it's been going on a long time. Let's begin where we left off. Remember how exciting it was? Do you remember third grade reading class? Most people I talk to say they remember the same thing. Sitting with your group at reading table, everyone has to read out loud, and pretty soon it's your turn. Chances are, while your classmates were reading, you weren't even listening. You were mentally counting how many more students before it's your turn. You know, your fear builds, your fingers tremble, and you can't stop thinking how hard it is. Finally, it's your turn. What? Father? One agonizing word at a time, you somehow get through the paragraph. A and you make it through the day, and you make it through third grade, and it doesn't ever really go away. Now you've moved from the classroom to the conference room. They're not your classmates, so they're your colleagues. Report. You're all supposed to give your reports. It's gotta go from the top down. And you're doing it again, wondering which direction they're gonna yeah. start, counting down until so it's your turn. You're still focused on not wanting to make a mistake, on not wanting to look foolish, and your heart pounds. Why does this happen? <clears throat> Why do we spend time and energy dealing with fear and, and obstacles instead of taking action to move in the right direction? It's so simple we can recognize it in others, yet so subtle we don't always realize it in ourselves. the problem. We don't realize that we're focused on what we don't want. Listen, you know what you don't want, so forget about it. Move in the opposite direction. One small shift will make a big difference. It's not going to be easy. The hard work is focusing on what you want to happen and not what you're trying to avoid. We get more of what we focus on. Here are three steps to get you started. Begin by making a commitment. Make a commitment to focus on what you want instead of what you don't want. Say what you want. Focus on that goal. More important than the words you say to others are the words you say to yourself. The next step is to monitor yourself. Become aware of what you're focusing on and focus on what you can control instead of what you can't. Celebrate your successes no matter how small. And catch yourself when your thoughts, your actions, and your words don't line up. The final step is to practice. Be persistent. Write it down. Write down very specifically what you want. One page out loud each day. Make a contract with yourself. Now picture it in your mind. Once you see it clearly, you'll start taking action and move toward what you want. Small successes and large achievements all start in the same way. Somebody focuses on what they want, and by doing that, they make it happen. Let me tell you a story. In 1983, Cliff Young decided to run the Sydney to Melbourne ultramarathon race. The six-day, 875-kilometer run is considered to be the world's toughest race. That's over 500 miles. Only the most elite runners are up to the challenge. Ready to go, Cliff Young, a 61-year-old farmer, is wearing a sweater and galoshes. When the marathon starts, the runners leave Cliff and his galoshes behind. The crowds laugh because he appears to be shuffling his feet instead of running correctly. Mockingly, it's called the Cliff Young Shuffle. But because he never read a book on racing, because he never talked to another runner, at night when everyone else is sleeping, he shuffles right by them. 
nonstop for five and a half days. He didn't know there was a limit. He didn't know he wasn't supposed to do that. He just knew what he wanted, focused on that, and kept running. Cliff Young won that race. He broke the record by nine hours. Today, most of the runners who compete in an ultra marathon still do the Cliff Young Shuffle. Cliff Young's story is one of dedication and determination and a clear example of achieving success through focusing on what you want. You know what your options are. More of what you don't want or more of what you want. It's time to make the right choice. Focus on what you really do want. It's waiting out there for you. It's a good video, isn't it? It's, uh, it's one of my favorites. And just to review a couple points, uh, some of the key messages that Laura is sharing with us, and a reminder of what we talked about at the beginning. What are we looking for? Where is it that we want to go? All right? We get more of what we look for, right? You have a sense of optimism, you're going to find optimism. If you have a sense of hope, you're going to be hopeful. If you have a vision for what your goal is going to be, those goals that are written down on your bathroom mirror, that's what you're going to go after. And you won't be put off from its achievement. You'll just keep going on and going on and going on. Even if you don't know the rules, new possibilities, just like, just like Cliff Taylor, you can still go on and go on, maybe break new rules and and new records, and become something really great. Surprise yourself. So where are we focused? Where is our mind focused? Where is our mind at right now? Am I feeling upbeat? Am I excited about where I'm going? Am I excited about my future, what my goals are? And since we get more of what we, what we want, better to state those in the very positive rather than saying, I don't want, right? I want to be able to graduate from Jackson Community College with my Associate of Arts degree. I want to be able to get in the nursing program. I want to be a better student at mathematics. And with those come action steps. If I want to be better in mathematics and I'm not very good right now, then I know I need to go to the Center for Student Success to get some help, to get some peer tutoring. And ladies and gentlemen, there is no honor lost in asking for help. One of the things that I hear over and over and over again from our students who come to JCC, which just breaks my heart, is that we don't ask when we need help. We fail to ask the question for fear of, of looking silly, for fear of asking some dumb question. How did this mental model get started anyway? We all come into the world knowing nothing. The way that we learn something is by trial and error, right? How many times did we fall down as children before we learned how to walk? We kept on trying. We all walked here. We're able-bodied people. We came here today, didn't we? So we, we persisted, didn't we? Somewhere along the line, we, we told ourselves, I don't want to feel embarrassed. I don't want to look silly. And so what have we done? We've traded our future education for not wanting to look silly. We've traded understanding for ignorance. We've traded our ability to be successful for maybe mediocre. What I'm asking and what Laura is telling here is we get more of what we focus on, to be optimistic and think about what we are doing. What are those mental messages and mental models that we're putting in our head? What are they saying? And make them be positive. So let's review the key points that Laura shared with us. Make a commitment. Set those goals. Decide what you want to be. You know, truth is, ask the silly questions in class. It doesn't matter. You're probably not going to see these people for the rest of your life anyway. Ask the question. I don't know. It's okay. The rest of us are stupid. In fact, I'm incredibly stupid. I know less and less every day because information is doubling every three years. Right? It's okay. Ask the question. 